You see those sparks? Those sparks are caused by objectionable current. This wall fall iron is off, but this is an old three wire stove. But objectionable current is not automatically a shock hazard. Let's get into it. I just did a video on bonding and grounding and objectionable current kept coming up and objectionable current is dangerous, but the comment section seems to misunderstand how and why it's dangerous. So let me just show you this quick demonstration. All right, now to do the testing and make it easier to replicate that, I have a jumper from the frame and I'm gonna go to this ground bar I added. So you see the sparks? So let's make that connection and put some meters on it. All right, now I have the jumper connected from the frame to that makeshift ground bar I put in. When I put an amp probe on that cable, we have seven amps going across that cable because we have a neutral imbalance. Right now the neutral imbalance is seven. If I disconnect that, that'll double. But there's no shock hazard as of yet. So the inverse mirror thing doesn't work when you have uh, filming vertical. But that is seven amps on this wire. And if I disconnect it, we have arcing. See the arcing? Very subtle, hopefully it shows up on camera. But there is no shock hazard. There is no shock hazard with objectionable current as long as the neutral is good. It's when the three wire neutral at the panel, the receptacle in the oven goes bad, then you have a shock hazard. The shock hazard doesn't exist as long as the neutral is good. The reason there's no shock hazard is the voltage difference between the two is very, very minimal. So we get seven amps on it. Let's see if I can, let's see I have my leads connected to it. Now if we take a voltage reading between the two, we'll disconnect that. So now our two leads are taking a voltage reading between the two. The voltage between the two points is 0.7 volts. That's why it won't shock you. 0.7 volts is enough to divide the imbalance across a very good connection, but not enough to send any of the imbalance through you because you have too much resistance. All right, let's move on. But if something was to go wrong and this neutral associated with that oven becomes disconnected, that goes from 0.7 volts to 120 volts. Let me show you. So this whole video has been do not try this at home material, but now we're really deep in it. The frame of the oven is energized with 120 volts because I've disconnected the neutral. This is the neutral. It's energized with 120 volts. Now if I connect that wire to that ground bar, I should get 14 amps on it instead of seven. So now I have the neutral connected drawing an imbalance and now that conductor has 14 amps on it so neutral i mean sorry objectionable current is dangerous in a whole bunch of ways but i don't think anybody in the comment section said why it was dangerous correctly um i could do i'm probably going to do a longer video on this but i just want to show this demonstration just to start the ball rolling on where people have questions about objectionable current um it is to be avoided at all costs. It is dangerous, but it's not an automatic shock hazard unless the neutral fails. That whole setup of allowing objectionable current on the frame of a range and dryer was not a code violation until 1996, and it's still allowed in existing installations. So what I have here is the 1968 NEC handbook. And in here, the handbook gives you the insight of why back then they thought it was okay. Let me show you. Flip it open. So here's the rule that lets you do it in the, in the times you're allowed to. This is 1968. And here, right here, is the reason, whoops, is the reason why they say it's allowed. The reason for permitting this. Basically, I, I'm trying to hold it so you can read it or pause it, but basically what it says is the wire in the circuit is so large, it's unlikely to be broken. And when it does become broken, it becomes inoperative. Which is not true. This stove works completely fine without a neutral. But yeah, there you go. All the, all the uh, burners and oven work without an imbalance and all the controls work without a neutral. So it's all, everything is 240 volts. To get the imbalance, I had to use the accessory outlet. All right, thank you very much. So I just watched that video and I just wanna add this little footnote before I post it. I don't want anyone to think this is the end all be all of all things objectionable current. There's a bunch of ways objectionable current is dangerous and bad and bad for equipment and way it can hurt, ways it can hurt people. But, uh, 
I was just making this video to show there was a lot of people in the comments that thought the, it automatically became a shock hazard if it existed. If you touched something with objectionable current and touched the ground, you're automatically getting shocked. Not that it's deeper than that, more complex than that. Maybe I'll do more videos on it as the questions come. All right. Thank you very much.